My name's Kevin Blake. That's Matt Chapman, and I've had to suffer playing this game with him. It's a tough life. We know it's a fact, don't we, Blakey? It's a fact. No, disagree. Go and take him on. Mm, I'm going to take him on. Go again, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot play any of those out. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Royal Ascot Agree to Disagree with Chappers and Blake. In Spiral, we'll beat modern games in the Queen Anne. Um, I probably disagree now, but mm. I don't fancy either of them. You are, I mean, look, I think in Spiral, on her best form, she can win it. Modern games is an absolute star, but they're the kind of horses I'd last like taking on. So I will take them on. That wasn't a question. No, but that, <laughs> when have we ever stuck to questions? <laughs> American Rascal will beat elite status in the Norfolk. I agree. Yeah, he looked like an absolute weapon. You know, we know the crack with the Wes Ward horses. You know, he's going to jump and run. Elite status, I've nothing really against him. But American Rascal looked to have inherited plenty of Mammy's brilliance. So, yeah, I like I mean, him. Look, you're a banana if you're adamant about any of this. They could both be superstars, but to say it will beat it, the answer's got to be done. No. You've been called worse things than a banana. A sadna will get turned over in the Coventry. Could. Or I, will. I might think he might. You might as well have the field running for you, might as you when you've got one horse in the race. Yeah, it's, it's the Coventry. It's full of super promising horses. I'd prefer a few to him. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Get turned over. Turned over. Tahira is a sir to beat Morge in the coronation. No. I agree. But you earlier said yes. No. Yeah, I agree. That's what yes. You think means. he's a cert? Yeah. Okay. Well, she's a cert. Um, she clearly isn't, is she? Any horse that has to be held up at Ascot round the bend is never a certainty. She's got to find a path through. And I can't remember how many winners has the jockey ridden at Ascot. I don't know. You're telling me. Sounds like you know. <laughs> it's not for me to know these things. You're the statistician. <laughs> I'm just here for the entertainment. <laughs> Highfield Princess will get beat in the King's Stand. Got to take her on. Oh, yeah. Reluctantly, reluctantly. I'd love to see her win, but I don't know whether that ask... I know she's won at York, but I just don't know whether she'll have the pace. Ah, because you won the non -tar. Yeah, but there are loads of front runners in this race. Loads of them. Yeah. There's yeah. going to be... It's pure speed. I think you're going to want to come off it, but maybe she could. Anyway, got to take her on. Caldium is a good thing in the St. James's Palace. No, disagree. Go and take him on. Mm, I'm going to take him on. Bit worried about that new market farm. Deep ground, taking a couple of little knocks. Yeah, strong St. James's Palace stakes. I want to take him on. Yeah, for me, the ground is the key. Is he a better horse with some juice? A little bit like you, Blakey. Coltrane will get turned over in the Gold Cup. Disagree. Yeah, I think Coltrane is the one. You know, I, I will take Coltrane on, um, but I would love... There's such a story with this horse. It's sort of come from almost the dead. It's back. Terrific owners. Nothing would give me more happiness. Coltrane, of course, passed away. Old Robbie, not so long ago. I'd love Coltrane to win it. I've got to take him on. You love an old fairy tale. Adia will get beat in the Prince of Wales. I think so. Oh, 100 per cent. Yeah. I, I, I can't fancy him at all. Stays all day, wants soft ground. How's he going to have the pace? It's a pity Desert Ground's not in there, but I still think something will outspeed him. But stay on Thunderstorm watch. Little Big Bear is a good thing in the Commonwealth Cup. Well, I'll be stunned if you don't say yes to this. Stunned. Um, I don't think he's a good thing, but I wouldn't like to be taking him on. Well, that's the question, though. Is he a good thing no, or not? I don't think he's a good thing, but so I you're think... Gonna, so you don't think he'll win? Do you or do you, don't you? That, you have to answer the question. I think he might or win. Or are you in the back pocket I, of the O'Brien? I think he might win, but I wouldn't, like, go as strong as to say he's a good so thing. So your answer to this is no? I think a lot of people are going to take him on, and I wouldn't be queuing up to do so. So your answer is no. He's not a good thing? Yeah. No. Negative. Ryan Moore is the world's best jockey. Come on. Uh, uh, look, Just I, say yes. I agree. La of course you do. Last 18 months, he's been better than ever. He has. There's no one else in the world, I don't think, riding better than him on the international stage consistently. James McDonald. Brilliant in Australia. 
We don't we don't see him all that much around the world. We get to see him at Royal Ascot. Looking for I love James McDonald. He wrote he you once, love it. He once wrote a winner around Ross Common, would you believe, when he was but a lad. Frankel would have beaten Black Caviar had he ran in her golden jubilee. Oh, this is a no-brainer, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Australia. One hundred percent. Particularly if Luke Nolan eased up as well. <laughs> That's not Imagine. ideal against Frankel. Um, I mean, yes. <laughs> Clearly, he was a better horse than Black Caviar. And the Australians will go crazy at this, and already down, and they'll be messy as hell. But we know it's a fact, don't we, Blakey? It's a fact. Frankel was better than Black Caviar. A factual fact. Over every distance. Five furlongs, six furlongs, seven furlongs, a mile, mile and a quarter, mile and a half, two miles, two and a half miles. Every racing distance, Frankel was better. Stradivarius was a better stayer than Yates. Well, you, we know what you would say, Matt, because you're in Aidan O'Brien's pocket. So what do you think? 100%. I, and I'm happy to admit that I would love to. I'd love to be in Aiden. I just think of all the two year olds you can see. Um, hi, Aiden. Just pop me out the poppy. Uh, right. Um, Yates was a better racehorse than Stradivarius, in my opinion. Yeah. More I, class. I agree. More class. I agree. Much yeah. than I love the Strad. Yeah. Aiden O'Brien is the best Royal Ascot trainer of all time. We know what you're going to say, Matt. Well, I think it's impossible to say that. He's certainly got the most powerful hand to play, and he plays it brilliantly. But was he better at Royal Ascot than Sir Henry Cecil? I would question that. Is he the most successful trainer in Royal Ascot history? Oh, clearly he is. No, he's not. Sir Michael Stout is. He's one, no. He's one ahead of him. No. Not by the time this goes out. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley Ward's horses are overrated at Royal Ascot. I don't think they're overrated, but I think they're overbet. That's the definition of overrated. <laughs> well, you find a dictionary that says that betting has anything to do with being overrated. No, the, 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 the point is with the... I think he's been a bit unlucky with the weather. He hasn't always picked great jockeys. Um, oh, last year. But... Um, he's bringing over his American lads again. I think the ground is the absolute key. I think those, those two-year-olds, when it's good to firm, they go faster than most of us. Yeah, it's one of your better points, that one. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that one. Have we answered the question? No. No. <laughs> Frankie de Tori is the best Royal Ascot jockey ever. That's interesting, because he's Italian. And usually only positive if it's Irish, so what do you think? <laughs> I'd agree, I'd agree. You'd yeah. say he is the best. Ah, riddled with recency bias now, but in my lifetime, uh, that's all, the only time I know is my time, I, I'd say Frankie is the best, yeah. OK. Well, Aiden's going to be happy with that answer, and you're, of course, so close to Ryan Moore, but anyway, good luck. I uh, clearly isn't. Royal Ascot is the best flat meeting in the world. Oh, this yeah, is interesting. I'll, I'll agree, I love Royal Ascot. Why are you always going on about Irish Champions Weekend? Yeah, but, uh, Royal Ascot's better than them all. Royal Ascot's class. Look, it's, 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 I would say, the most difficult race meeting in the world to have a winner at as a, as a trainer. Um, in particular, as a jockey to a lesser extent, um, and it's brilliant. You know, the pomp, the ceremony. I never thought I'd like that when I was younger, but now that I've been there and been there a good few times and done all the morning dress and top hat stuff, it's class. You know, it's different. It's one week a yeah. year and it's brilliant. I love it. OK, short answers. Um, yeah, I think I think it's hard to disagree that he's one of them. I mean, it just depends what you want, though, from a race meeting. It depends what you want. Ascot does give you the fashion and it does give you great horses. But I always think people who say things like that probably haven't gone to enough other meetings. I mean, you've been to a Melbourne Cup, so you know how good that is. No, I haven't. I thought you had. No. Oh, well, in that case, that's, <laughs> that's why you've given the answer you had, because you're clueless. That's why you've given a really long answer. You're waffling. Between us, it was a long answer. This has been agree to disagree. This has been agree or disagree, the Royal Ascot edition. Shall I do it? Thanks for watching, agree to disagree. That's fine. Why do you need more than that?